I'm Devin Balcom. I'm an associate professor of computer science, and uh, I'm interested in robotics, uh, specifically manipulation of flexible objects, but also motion planning in general. I used to be a swim coach, and one of the things I remember was that it was really hard to uh, explain motion to people. It's hard to tell um, what they're doing wrong. First of all, they're in the water and you can't see them very well. And once you do figure out what you would like to tell them, it's very hard to describe it. So the difficulty is, how do we explain something to them uh, in a natural way? One idea is to put them inside of a robot, like an Iron Man suit. But this is very dangerous and expensive and somewhat intrusive. Uh, so our idea was to do something a little simpler, which is to put uh, little buzzing cell phone motors all over the people and use some external sensors to determine where they are and then buzz those motors to guide them to, to where they should be. We'd like to train people to do a lot of things, anything you can imagine that somebody would do motion for. Um, I imagine things like swimming, of course we haven't gotten into the water yet, dancing. Uh, what if somebody has some limitations? Uh, what, if they're, uh, what if they're blind and they can't see things? We'd like to be able to guide them to do things um, without actually having to put hands on somebody and actually show them how to do it. We can actually give them some more independence this way. Uh, so anything that we can train people to do physically. One of the problems uh, that has always been hard in robotics is how to manipulate flexible stuff. Um, people have built robots to show off how dexterous they are by doing things like tying a knot. It's very hard to build a robot like that. We want to come up with shapes um, so that when you push it through, it ties into a knot, and when you pull it out, there's still a knot. We don't lose the knot. At the micrometer scale, for example, one could, could build these devices and tie very small things, human hairs, um, can one cut, tie carbon nanotubes? I don't know. Um, how about proteins? You know, those things are shaped into, into particular shapes by some device that's a particular shape. In the human body, it's a protein. Um, but can we do that sort of thing artificially? So ultimately, we'd like to change scales. We'd like to do small things as well as large things. Uh, so that's one application. The other application is that we can tie many knots at once. If you have lots of these little devices, then you can actually tie knots very quickly. The theoretical work we're doing here is uh, take in a robot design, figure out what exactly is the fastest way to move from one place to another. Now in terms of real life, there's a number of problems that we'd like to solve with this. Um, one is obviously moving mobile robots around. The more mobile robots you have, the more you can get done, but also the faster you move them, the more you can get done. Another application of this is that we've started to generalize the theory to look at the problem of a rigid body in the plane. Now, a rigid body in the plane might actually be a part in a factory that's being pushed by a robot arm. And we'd like to push that part as little as possible to get it to the final configuration with the arm. And uh, so the idea is to not only just optimize the motion of mobile robots, but also um, optimize uh, factory uh, automation. As computers get more and more powerful, we expect them to, to have more of an impact on the physical world that we live in and so that we're not drawn into the computer's world all the time uh, to compute things.